I mean, I love an afternoon crowd that has great energy. And why wouldn't you? Because you are the luckiest people on the planet at the 35th annual Food and Wine Classic in Aspen. Okay, first things first, I should probably introduce myself. My name is Nilu Motamid, and I am the editor-in-chief of Food and Wine. And what better way to kick off this party than with a prize? Are we ready? Okay, so our amazing friend, this is Beth from KitchenAid. Come on, Beth, come here. This is, okay, do you see this amazing kitchen? Look at this. Okay, so Beth and KitchenAid have been kind enough to give us a prize. One person is going to win a make-along with the amazing Andrew Zimmern tomorrow at 1230. In the courtyard at St. Regis. At the courtyard at St. Regis. Now, do we want to know who's winning? Okay, everyone's got to reach under your seat. There's one golden ticket for the prize. Reach under. Do we have a winner? Come on, people, get in there. Yeah, this guy's serious. Woo! There, we have a winner. Gentlemen in row four. Okay, you're going to see. What's your name, sir? Sean? Scott. I'm sorry. It's loud. Party, man. People have been drinking. Congratulations to you. See Beth afterwards, and she'll give you all the details. Okay, so wasn't that fun? Yay! Okay, so I think we're done. Okay, we should all go home. Okay, just kidding. Okay, so... I know you're all here with these smiling faces after a long day of drinking robustly, I hope. I'm glad you're, you're all hydrating. Um, to see none other than the grill master of all grill masters. I mean, this guy, Tim Love, does not need an introduction. I just like to get up here and say hi to you all. But I will do that because he deserves it. So I was just with him. Um, we were just in Austin at one of our other festivals. And woo! Texas proud. Go ahead. Go ahead. Bring it on. Listen, Texas all the way. And I am blown away by the way he can master a crowd. There was a crowd of 500 people cooking along with Tim Love every step of the way in the heat. So we have it a little bit easier because we get to sit down and enjoy this man's incredible grill talent. Let me tell you a little about him because there's so much I had to write it down. So not only is Tim an all-around ambassador for the best of Texas, no matter where he goes, he's first and foremost chef and owner of the amazing Lonesome Dove Western Bistro in Texas and Tennessee, Queenie's. Woo! Can we get, no, let's Tennessee, let's go, let's go. I need to mention more states. Um, Queenie's Steakhouse in his hometown of Denton, Love Shack and the Woodshed Smoke and the Woodshed Smokehouse. And he just recently added an amazing donut concept called, and I love this, the back dough. I mean, not only is the man handsome, he is also wicked funny. So, so this guy is going to teach you a lot today. I know some of us get a little nervous around our grill in the summertime, but no need. His chop shop, which is what this demo is called, is going to let you know everything you need to know to excel at summer. So. I think I've taken up too much time already, so I'm going to ask you please to give a Aspen and Texas welcome to Mr. Tim Love! Right here, right? This is where all the good times are gone. Shit. Welcome, everybody. Okay, 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 okay. Now, a couple things, a couple things. Let's get some laundry out here. We've got a full house. I know you had some cocktails this morning. Y'all aren't going to believe this, but that was my first shot at tequila today. 
trying to make this thing special for y'all, but I can't walk in and go, hey, welcome. Y'all are like, oh, shit, great. It'd be awesome. So how about a little bit louder? We ready to have some fun or what? There we go. That's the Aspen I know right there. I don't normally do the afternoon classes. I like to get you while you're fresh. So, but I'll get you afterwards. That's good. Um, welcome. Y'all having some fun so far? This literally might be the best weather. I've been, I've, you know, I have to celebrate this a little bit. This is my 10th anniversary at Aspen Food and Wine. So I'm kind of stoked about that. Um, We've been doing a lot of fun stuff here, I'm just adjusting my heat very quickly here. Uh, but more importantly, it's been a lot of fun because all you guys come and have fun with us, so I really appreciate that. We, us monkeys up here can't have any fun if y'all aren't here watching us, so we appreciate it. But we're going to learn this. This is a new demo today. I've never done this demo ever in my life, and I thought I was going to make some notes, and I ran into some friends, and we drank two bottles of wine, so it's going to be fun. <laughs> I wish I was joking when I said that. Um, now, uh, this is called Chop Shop. So a lot of times, you know, I do a lot of stuff about steaks and things like that. We're not actually going to grill any beef today. We're going to do some alternative cuts. But more importantly, all the cuts that we're doing are going to have bones in them. So a lot of times, cooking different meats with bone in it is a little bit more difficult than without. Right, ladies? OK. So you have, you're almost waking up. So over here, we've got, this is a lamb saddle, okay? Lamb saddle, it's the back of the lamb, right, where the saddle would go. We've got a rack of pork, right, basically the ribeye of the pork. We've also got, uh, what else do we have? I'm just kidding. We've got some salmon. Y'all see that? Bone-in salmon chops. We'll put this somewhere. And then um, lastly, really the, probably the most simple piece of meat we're going to cook today is these elk chops. Yeah, see? Just when you thought I was really just full of shit, we're actually going to do something. So I think we should start it off fairly quickly, if y'all don't mind, and let's start with the lamb, huh? So what I need is a couple people to help me out. Anybody got some volunteers? I'll take this gentleman right here. I need somebody way in the back. You with the checkered shirt on way in the back. Bring your ass up here. So now listen, as they're walking up here, we're going to go over this real quickly. So as you can see... We get to the short loin in the back, and then the ribeyes in the front, right? Most of the lamb chops, you see bone-in lamb chops like lollipops. It's going to come from this front end. As you see, it gets wider. We get into the loin. We want to do a loin chop today. So these folks are going to help me cut a loin chop. You ready? How much y'all had to drink today? Oh, good. So you don't mind when I do this shit, right? Okay. Now. What's your name? Stephanie. Stephanie. Come over here, Stephanie. And your name, sir? Ellsworth. El Ellsworth. Ellsworth. What is that? Scottish Arabian? I have no idea. You got it. You got it. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So I need you to hold this in. Okay. Ellsworth? Do you go anything by short, like E or anything like that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. How much have you had to drink? <laughs> oh, it's not that bad. I've been worse. So we're going to tilt it up, please. You've got to hold on to it. Honey, this is a, this is a show. We've got to, like this, okay? Right. Now, the good thing when you cut this in half, it doesn't matter where you cut it because we're going to cut right through the bone, right? So just hold tight. <laughs> Seriously. And I know the fat's a little slippery. Sometimes I, it's weird. Right. Hold it. That wasn't a good spot. This is not How about now? All right, now flip it over. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> Jose Andres doesn't have this shit in his class. Because this ass is from Spain. My shit's from Texas. <laughs> a 
You got to hold on because it gets real dangerous. There we go. All right, now look. Now we got a place where we want to take a cut. Now you're not done yet. Don't go anywhere. You all want a shot? Does it make you feel better? You're nervous? So look, this looks like lamb chops, right? Okay, good. That's awesome. I didn't screw that up. Now, this is almost at what we call the butcher's cut, which is what we're going to grill today. So then, I need, this gets real dangerous, so we've got to pay attention. Now, E, hold that. Come over here, young lady. This is important. I'm just kidding. Well, you volunteered. I didn't ask you to come up here. Hold it with that towel. Don't let it move. You just stand here and watch. Now, we got to cut a chop off of here, right? So we're going to stand it up again. Stand it up. Yep. Don't cut your fingers. I'm the one with the knife. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hold tight. Hold tight. Hold tight. Hold tight. You're almost there. Watch the bottom finger. Go through that center bone here. Perfect. All right, now flip it up. That's it. Oh, he, he never thought he was going to do this shit. <laughs> this side now. Like this, just like we had it. Right. Don't hold your hand there. That's a good, a bad idea. All right. All right, big hand for these guys. Now, let me show you. This goes right before we get to the T-bone cut. So see how this bone gets a little bit bigger here? We'll cut some more in a little bit. We get right into where it becomes T-bone chops, which is what this side is, see? The loin and... Now we're good. Y'all want a shot? You did really well there. I'm proud of you. I don't even know where the shot glasses are. Have you met her before? No. Good, perfect. Going first. You don't get to volunteer anymore. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Thanks for the help. Thanks for the help. Attaboy, E. Don't drink it all. Damn. Now, we got us some chops. I don't know if y'all are wondering, but this is called the Chop Shop. Got some chops. So we're going to trim them up a little bit here. I'll go to the main cutting board so y'all can see better. And we're going to do a double chop, which I really like. We're going to trim the fat a little bit because we don't need all this fat for this particular application and get it down to just what we want. So see this? Look nice. Now, let's talk about what we got to do here. So <clears throat> we don't have a grill here. We have a grill right there. I don't know if you guys noticed that, which means we're going to act like we have a grill here, and then we're going to talk about the grill over there. <laughs> Is that fair? All right. Now. We'll take this chop, clean it up a little bit, and then we're going to put a little bit of oil on it. So we got some canola oil here and peanut oil. We're going to go with peanut oil because I'm an American. I'm going to grow peanuts. I need a pastry brush. Pastry brush? I know it's somewhere in this mix. Oh, <laughs> we got drawers in this kitchen. There it is. I knew it. Thank you. All right, pastry brush. So we're dip a little bit of peanut oil. Now we're doing this because we're simulating going on the grill. So here, this is a grill. This is a grill, right? Nice and hot. We're not, we don't want to add oil to the pan because this pan has some ridges in it to simulate a grill. And we're going to season up this lamb. And we're going to season it with our uh, badass rub because it's badass. Right? Just making sure. So let me show you what's in it so you guys know. Uh, cracked black pepper. Kosher salt. Any rub you do with meat, your salt should be two times anything else. It's very important. And anytime you have a microphone, it's never going to be in the right spot. Guajillo chili powder, y'all. Because, again... I'm from Texas and an American both. 
fresh rosemary. And you can chop this or leave it whole. I'm going to leave it whole this time. I'm going to show this. Toasted cumin. Okay, take cumin, toast it first, grind it in a spice grinder, and then a little fresh thyme. Now we're going to mix all this up. Remember, we have oil on there already. And now we're going to season well. When you leave the rosemary whole like this, and you grab the season, it's going to kind of dominate the grasp. So you want to kind of place the rosemary here like this, okay? Then we're going to flip it. Same thing. Everybody got that so far? Is there anybody out there taking notes? Who? Who? You're taking notes? She is? Are you with anybody? You're by yourself? Uh, uh, four girls? Are any boys with you? Okay, good. Just making sure, because you're going to go home and like, tell him a story about it, which I love. <laughs> You're like, so this is the way you have to grill now. That's going to make him real happy with me. <laughs> now, very hot. As hot as you can get it, almost. Now, inside, that's a little bit different because it's going to smoke you out. However, outside, you want your grill as hot as you can get it, literally, for this dish. So into the amazing grill we have here. Now, at this point, you'd want to close the lid of the grill, okay? Very important. So you have a grill. You create smoke. What you want is that smoke to go into the food, right? That's the flavor we like when we're grilling a smoke. So we want to close the lid. You can do it without the lid. It just doesn't taste as good, right? Okay, it's going to be a tough crowd. I got it. It's fine. Let me just get my shit cleaned up here. Now... As that's searing, let's talk about the next chop. We're going to go with pork. Will you hold this for me real quickie? Huh? You good with that? <laughs> Just hold it. Now, it's kind of soft in your hands, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. So y'all thought we were talking about grilling. I'm just throwing shit. Okay, so now we've got a rack of pork here. So this particular rack of pork, I've already stuck in a brine. So I'm going to go over that real quick just so you, know, you guys know what that is. So a brine is basically salt and water and then whatever else you want to add to it. I don't really like to make very many sweet brines, and I don't really like sweet food so much. So most of my brines are savory. So this one did salt water. Those of you taking notes, that's about, uh, about half a cup of salt to a gallon of water, warm water. Um, chili flakes and whole garlic cloves. You want to stir that up until the salt dissolves and then add cold meat to it. Then I like to add a little bit of ice and I let it sit out on the counter for about an hour. Pork only needs to be brined for an hour. The opposite of poultry, which you can brine for 24 hours. Okay. Uh, it just really absorbs the salt really quickly. Uh, so if you let it sit too long, it's going to be really, really salty. Now, when we take this pork chop, and I particularly like these rib chops, right? It's basically like a gigantic lamb chop like we have here. I think the flavor here is better. I think the fat content here is better than, say, a loin chop or anything like that. These are a little bit more expensive, but let's be honest, pork's not that expensive. So just buy the good shit. So... We're going to season this one up. Now, I have the same game rub here that I just made, okay? But we're going to add a little bit of sugar to it. I know I don't like sweet things, but the thing with pork is, pork itself, especially with the brine, gets really savory really quickly. So a little bit of sweetness goes a long way with pork. That's why you always hear about pork and applesauce, right? Why is that funny? <laughs> Who was that? Again? Get your ass up here. Come here. Come here. Making fun of me in the middle of the crowd. I'm just getting started. Like I haven't even like had any fun yet. What was the joke? Why don't I have shot glasses? Where are my shot glasses? Oh, they're right here. What's your name? Nick Brandis. Oh, it's even better. You know why she's making fun of me? Because she hates tequila. This is great. You know what you get to do? 
No, two shots. I'm going to vomit on this Don't vomit. No, you're going to vomit in your seat. Just tell your girlfriends about it. <laughs> I'll do one with you. You don't have to do both of them. All right, here we go. Cheers. Say it again. What's your name? Brandis. Bra- yeah. Brandis. Brandis. Yep. That's how you spell that. B-R-A-N-D-I-S. I-S? Mm-hmm. Where does that come from? It's Dutch. Do you know this? Yeah. yeah. Is that part of your, <laughs> it's part of your deal? <laughs> You want to hold that saddle for a little bit? If he'll take the tequila shot. No, 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 no. That doesn't work like that. Here we go. Cheers. You're at Aspen Food and Wine, honey. This ain't church, all right? All right. You can have a seat now. Thank you for making fun of me. All right. Now, we got some tongs. What did I just do with my tongs? Where? Okay. Thank you. Now, see this chair we got here? Thank you. So, remember this. This is really important about Chop Shop. Pay attention now. So, patience is the first thing. So, we've been talking about the pork, but we always got to refer back where we're at. So, we've been talking about the pork. We want to get a nice sear. As you can see, we have a beautiful sear. The, the fat is really caramelized really well. It's crispy. I can touch right here. It's got a little crunch to it. Really, really important. We got to remember there's a center bone in this thing, right? Back to here. Let's refer to that. Come back here. We got a large center bone right there. So that means the meat's going to take a while to cook, especially on a grill. So we got to have patience, always patience when you're grilling with meat. We all want to mess with the meat. You can't mess with the meat, especially the dudes. The dudes always want to mess with the meat. Now, Let's talk pork. This is a big pork chop, right? But this is the kind of pork chop you want to serve because it's better, if you're going to have guests over, I'd rather you have six people and have three of these than have six of ones that are cut in half. It's A, it's going to look better when I make this big old badass plate for you, and B, it's going to taste better, have opportunity to cook better, and I'll show you how that works. So what are we going to add first? Peanut oil, that's right. You can use grapeseed oil if you have a peanut allergy. It's not going to taste as good, but, you know, everybody has problems, I guess. <laughs> and you can, you can also use um, avocado oil, but then, then I mean, you're from California, so that's even worse. So let's just, <laughs> I'm kidding. Who's from California? Okay. 6%. That's fine. I can still make fun of y'all. I was just in California. I was at Bottle Rock. It was amazing. All right. Peanut oil. And I use this for a lot of reasons, but really the main reason why I use it is for flavor. I think roasted peanut oil is some of the best in the world. Uh, it provides an amazing flavor for meats, so I like to use it. Um, I also like it because it has a very high temperature. So we grill really hot. We use olive oil like Mario and all those crazy Italian fools. The, the meat gets bitter. That's why the pasta is like incredible. And the meat's kind of like, eh. Man. I mean, I'll go back. The pasta was amazing, but I don't know about the meat. Just jokes, just jokes. All right, so we're going to add some sugar to the game rub here. It's about quarter to one ratio for those with the notes. Season heavily. Now, you notice I'm seasoned heavily because it's a very big piece of meat, right? Now, uh, I have a half sheet pan or something, or I can just do this. So now, this is seared on both sides, so let's look. Can we see that? Amazing. Yeah, the rosemary is real crispy. It's beautiful. Go back. Don't worry about the grill marks. They only do that for the commercials. We just want a nice, solid sear. We want the salt to be embedded into uh, bedded into the meat itself, and you can see what I'm talking about. So the salt crystallizes with the seasoning. The rosemary is embedded in that. That's all you care about when you're grilling. Get away from it looking so pretty like they do in the commercials, because that's what, I mean, people go to Applebee's for no reasons. <laughs> I mean, for a reason. What was it? There's some slogan. But you don't want to go there anyway, so let's go. Is there a CEO of Applebee's here? Okay, good. Now, I'm going to go into an oven like this. I got it set 400 degrees. Amazing KitchenAid ovens. 
and we're going to let that go for about three or four minutes. Don't let me forget that. Now we're going to talk pork. So we got seeds on the other side, right? You got seeds on the other side, right? Good Lord, have mercy. Is it Sunday? It can't be Sunday. All right. Like here? Now, same situation here. It's going to take a little bit, right? Because we want to get a good sear on it. This is where, and I'm literally not joking, this is where the guys really F it up. This is afternoon, Tim. I don't cuss in the afternoon. It's only in the mornings. Is this back to this patience thing. So we're, we're going to talk about this pork real quick, and I'm going to show you like this. So here's how it works. We're going to go put the pork on the grill. E. How we doing? So I'm going to put the pork on the grill. Okay. Then I'll shut the grill. You with me? What kind of grill you got? Viking. Viking, of course you do. <laughs> How many of them you got? You got like three or four of them? I've got one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So it's a gas grill? Yeah. Okay, great. You see? The lady always gives it up. She's like, she's got, he's got like three or four of them. <laughs> he got mad at last year's model. We bought another one. So you're going to shut the lid. Very important, shutting the lid. When you shut the lid, you got to remember that you put the meat on the grill. So when you're sitting there with your friends, right, do you drink cocktails? Good. So you're drinking cocktails, you shut the lid, and then what happens? One of your buddies, but more than likely it's you, tell your buddy about the new grill you just got, right? This one's really badass. That's what he's saying. Because, see, I had this old one, but they came out with a new Firepower 4000. And this bad boy, let me tell you something. So that's what we do as guys. We want to tell everybody about it, right? We want to show off. We want to tell everybody about our new grill, like this one right here. This one's got 70,000, 4,276,000,000 BTUs. You cannot get this bitch any hotter than my grill. And then what do you do? Y'all want a drink? And then you go make a drink, and you might forget, you might forget, but you don't want to, and you don't also want to mess with it for a while. Patience, real patience, to get a real true sear. When you think about things that you want to cook all the time on the grill, and we're going to get to the salmon in a minute, people always ask me, how do you cook chicken on a grill without making it stick? You get it hot, and then you don't fuck with it. <laughs> Two things everybody has a problem doing. I don't know why, but like, everybody wants to like, oh, man, I'm going to make some marks on this thing. Check this out. And then they put there like, oh, no, I don't think it was a perfect diamond. Maybe I ought to move it a little bit to the, what do you think? You think I should move it a little bit to the right? I mean, it's, and then your buddy always goes, man, every time I cook, I get perfect diamonds. So you're like, well, the hell with that. I'm going to fix it. Don't mess with it, man. It's one side, one side. That's all you need. It's all you need. And then we're going to finish them in the oven, or we're going to finish them on our grill, like this grill. I'm going to show you a little bit how you finish these things. So we've been about three minutes yet? All right, we'll pull this out. This is some of the important parts of what we're talking about. So now we're going to take this out, and I'm going to let it rest. I know everybody's heard about meat resting. If you've been anywhere in the food world, you know, you know what meat resting means. You might want two towels. My hand's kind of hurting right now. Just kidding. Not really, it's hot. Um, so, just going to sit here and just hang out, okay? Most important part of the whole process today is this right here. Now, we're going to flip this. It's been about three and a half, maybe four minutes. Now you're going to go, Tim, holy shit, it's burnt. And I'm going to go, Rob, what the fuck? My shit's burnt. What are you? I'm just kidding. It's actually supposed to look, remember, we have sugar in it. Anytime you put sugar into any rub, it's going to look just like that, if you do it right. But you notice it didn't stick. So we allowed the sugar to cook, turn into a liquid, blend in with the seasoning, form a crust, and then we flipped it. This right here is the most amazing thing on this whole chop. 
And it's very much required on a chop. We have these bones, and the meat just doesn't want to cook. So we're going to keep that going. And now we're going to talk about fish. Those of you who are taking notes, I am literally the most ADD person on the world. So I'd love to see the notes afterwards. Okay, now, let's talk about this. Fish. Most people don't refer to fish as chops. But I do, because I like to keep the bone in. So what we're going to do first is take one of these chops like this. So I do a lot of cooking for music festivals all around the world. And I've cooked for almost every band you can name. But last week I cooked for U2, which was amazing. And um, on Friday in Tennessee, it was really, in, really insane. Uh, but you run into people who have all these different dietary restrictions. I don't understand how they live, but that's fine. So salmon, uh, I get called for salmon a lot because it's very common and people know what it is. Uh, but this particular salmon, so if you think about it, the fish runs like this, right? So we have a chop. So we just cross cut it, pull the bones the best that we can, a little bit, and we leave them in there. That's the part you've got to remember about this dish. There is going to be some bones in the salmon. It is actually a, an actual fish that has bones. And then we're going to score the skin like this. So if you ever cook salmon, which I'm sure most of you have at some point in your careers, you want to get salmon that's been scaled, but leave the skin on. Now, you don't have to do this chop, but you should because you're at my demo. Score both sides. I'm going to make the crispiest skin you've ever seen in your life. This works whether or not you have this chop or just one individual filet. And maybe I should show you one filet and just so you understand. But this is really cool. So you're going to have this crispy skin on the outside and then the beautiful flesh on the inside. Now, this one gets a little bit more difficult because we don't have a flat surface. The pork chop's about ready to go in. So we're going to add oil to a cast iron pan, okay? This one's pretty hot. If it catches on fire, it's not a big deal. He says, I have 10 minutes. It's probably going to be 15, but I appreciate you. Now, season the skin just with kosher salt, okay? We want this because we want the skin just to dry a little bit. It's important. The skin gets a little bit of kosher salt, like so. You okay? You don't look like you're very happy. <laughs> Not you, the one behind you, this one right here. How many, how many Patron margaritas you have? <laughs> zero? What'd you drink? Don't say zero. She doesn't drink? A teetotaler. I knew it. <laughs> you and Tim McGraw. I did an event with Tim McGraw. That dude's amazing. And he's like, yeah, man, I drank more than 97% of the people on the planet. I'm done. I'm like, all right, cool. You grill salmon, though, don't you? That's what I'm talking about. All right. Now, this is the really, it's even harder than the meat. I need a towel, a dry towel. Because salmon is a little bit more delicate, right? Cooks a little quicker, uh, moves a little quicker in the pan. So this one's going in. Pay attention. Salmon, while it looks on the outside, can you get an inside shot of this? So it looks like the meat's cooking very quickly. Right? See on the edges? Because we're in a little bit, about a quarter inch of peanut oil here. And it looks like it's cooking, but it's actually not. I mean, it is, but slowly. So this is one that really will trick you up a little bit, especially if you just have one filet. You feel like, oh my gosh, I'm going to overcook the salmon. You're not. But you do have to pay attention. You, don't, you can't make the drink. I know that sucks, but you just can't. I can, but this is what I do, though. So we're going to pay attention to the salmon because when we, when we flip it, especially as this chop, it's very, very important. So we want to get enough time where the skin gets crispy. Now, notice I scored the skin. You guys see that? If you don't score the skin, you're going to put the salmon in there. It's going to look like the skin's getting crispy, but it's not because there's a big layer of fat underneath that skin, and you need to allow the oil to cook that fat down. That's what's going to make you the most perfect skin there is for salmon. Really, really crispy, really, really important. Everybody with me on that? 
Everybody in the back with me on that. All right, all right. All right, we're back. Now, as you see on the edge of the salmon, when it gets to be just a little bit over a quarter inch in the fat, okay, that's where we're going to flip this over. I only know this because my daughters love crispy salmon. That's their favorite thing on the planet. So, and they're here. I don't know where they are, but they're here somewhere. They can't, they're a little short. They, they can't see their hands yet. Now, we're going to flip this over. See, I was a little impatient. That's what I'm talking about. The patience, the fat just started melting, and I didn't give it time to develop, and that's important. Here we're perfect. You see this? Now, we're going to sear that skin, and as that's cooking, we're going to get some sauces, right? So, the pork is roasting. It's about to come out and rest. The salmon is cooking. The elk, I'll probably just cook later because this guy's not going to be happy with my time right now. <laughs> but this is what we would normally do. We're going to open up the grill, and I don't know if you can get a shot. Go above that grill there and show them that top rack in there. What's your name, sir, again? Sean. Sean, open the grill. Winner! I'm just kidding. So, what's that... What's that top rack right there? Sean, what do you do with that top rack? What'd you do with the last three grills, Sean? You didn't, right? You just took it out, stuck it on the side. Why not? Why not, Sean? Why didn't you use the top rack? Is that, is that, is that some sort of like bias against the top rack? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Sean. You can sit down now. So we would normally put this on the top rack and shut the lid, and it becomes your oven. That's where you finish meats. The top rack is made for finishing meats. It's not made for hot dog buns. It's not made for asparagus. It's not made for corn on the cob to sit here for three or four hours. I see you right there. She's like, man, my husband always does that shit. Right? What's your name? Quit playing with your hair. What's your name? Right in front of my wife. This one right in front of you, Emily. Who's that? Yeah, you. What do you, I heard, uh oh. See, now you messed me up. Talking. What are you saying? Nobody can hear you. Oh, that's. <laughs> your friend just sold your ass out. <laughs> Where are y'all from? Aspen. Oh, okay. Well, you're not from Aspen. Where are you from? There you go. Now we're talking. <laughs> I put my shit on top rack. I'm from New York. Of course you are. Okay. Now, look here. So the salmon, as we can see, is not, not cooked. And if you look to the interior, definitely not cooked. And in fact, the center here is still a little bit cool to the touch. Skin, crispy. Whatever her name is. Vegetable girl here messed me up. But now we got a crispy skin on this side too, right? So here's what we're going to do. Now... We're going to season the fish. So we have this thing called fish rub that we make. I already made it. I'll tell you what's in it. It's all this good shit right here, and then we put it on top. Okay, like this. Then we're going to flip it and do the same thing the other side. Remember, it hit the oil quickly, so it looks like this has been cooked, but it hasn't. Just like so. And this is where everything starts coming together. Now... We've got this unbelievable all kind of press right here. You guys may or may not have one of these at home, but if you don't, you can just grill it on both sides. But we're going to do this really quickly. It's going to happen in two minutes. So keep the skin, the crispiness, all the stuff on the outside. We're going to do it like this. We're going to put this press right on top. Okay? Two minutes, that salmon's going to be done. Who is that? I know you're from the south, I can tell by your voice. Where the hell are you? Yeah, don't forget the pork. Where are you from? Oh, you cheated. You didn't get there. You had to drive through somewhere to get there. I know your ass wasn't born there. Where were you born? Well, that's like the south, but they just don't know where the fuck they are. <laughs> North Dakota is like, the, like one place where everybody knows, nobody knows where the hell that is. Who's been in North Dakota? Yeah, less people than Californians. <laughs> I love it. Yes, thank you. Now, the pork comes out, and the pork's going to rest as well. 
And then we're going to throw the lamb back in to finish. I thought I was going to drop it. I heard you. But we're just going to put it in a broiler. All we want to do is just get it hot, and that thing's going to be ready. Same thing's going to happen with the pork. And now I'm going to quickly make this chimichurri. I need a plate for that salmon right here. All right. Chimichurri. This is, one of the, this is one of the most versatile sauces there is on the planet. We took roasted jalapenos like this. We peeled them and de them, and they started looking like this. So we're going to chop them up. Okay. Now, take some fresh basil. Chop. Cilantro. Chop. Flat parsley. Same shit. Chop. Now I'm going to take this little machine over here. I'm going to fill it up with all these herbs and the chilies. Then I'm going to add some fresh garlic, toasted cumin, red wine vinegar, okay, olive oil, like this, and some chili flakes, because I like it to be a little bit spicy, because I'm spicy, like this, now we'll buzz it up, now look, this might be one of the greatest inventions ever, I'm not kidding you, when I first started cooking, these little things didn't exist, and my chef used to make me chop every freaking thing by hand, everything, and we had to emulsify that shit with a whisk. That's why I quit. All right, amazing. Chimichurri, you're supposed to clap at this point, thank you, all right. Now, the lamb's going to come out. We've been about two minutes, hadn't we? Oh, shit. Salmon's going to go here. See how it just comes right off because I feel like I'm on AGS Center or something. It peels right off. The phones are going wild. <laughs> what a shit show. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't even know how to say about that. I need a big platter. All right. I'm going to take the lamb chops out. And we'll switch it with the pork. So you really want to rest at least 25 minutes, but we're on TV, so 25 minutes, up to four hours. When you have a party at your house, you should do all the grilling ahead of time, and then you should take everybody out to your grill, have a cocktail, and talk about how badass it is, okay, because that's how you're going to do it. It's also going to how you're going to stay married, all right, because we all know the chicks grill better than the dudes anyway, but... We got to have our solitude somewhere, man. I mean, damn. We got to be able to do something where nobody really gets that mad at us. So, salmon here. And we're going to do one more sauce. Where's one more cup? Give me a quart container or something. I'm going to do one more sauce for you all, which is really great for this salmon. It looks unbelievable. Now, the lamb, we go here. And then we got... Some yuzu aioli. And let me tell you about something about lamb. <clears throat> what lamb likes is citrus. Grilled citrus, more importantly, but just citrus in general. So I made a yuzu aioli here, which is very simple. Eggs, egg yolks. I get in trouble when I just say eggs. Egg yolks, um, yuzu juice, which is a Japanese citrus juice. Oh, it's right here. One of these. Um, or you can use orange and lemon, but if you can find this juice, which I know y'all can, because y'all are obviously very rich and you're here, so <laughs> you shop at different places than me. Now, you add that, you add a little bit of shallots, you turn your little mixture on like this with some badass one right here, and you just slowly add the oil, and you end up with a beautiful yuzu ale like this. Now, the citrus is so important for lamb, because lamb is pretty fatty, okay? And it's good fatty, not like crazy fatty, but it's good fatty, so it's this richness. So you want something to cut that, so we want some acid. So here we go. I need a spoon now. It's been sitting a little bit. So I got a small one. Okay. Spoon. 
Very small spoon. Now imagine if you're having a Christmas party and you have these, you're doing the chop party because obviously you're going to. This comes out. This is one. All right, clap. Wait a minute. E, why is this here? What? Magic. I thought I asked you to hold on to that. Okay, that's fine. Now, just when I thought he was on my team, man, I look over the saddles here. No, 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 don't do that. All right, now, sauce for the salmon. Then we're going to do a little Asian sauce for the salmon. So this is something you can definitely make. One Serrano chili. Hoisin. Everybody know what hoisin is? Anybody not know what hoisin is? Asian barbecue. That's a good reference. When's the last time you saw an Asian doing barbecue? I'm just asking. If you're going to bring it up. I'm just kidding. God, everybody's so sensitive these days. Now, a little honey. Okay. Fresh garlic. I already put one. Let's do two. Sesame oil. Rice wine vinegar. Ginger. Oops, I got that backwards. So we're Mike playing the ginger. Just like this. Okay. I just cleaned this. Y'all didn't see that. Now, cilantro. So it's actually going to be good. Literally the greatest thing ever invented in mankind is this thing. So see what it does with a margarita. All right. Now, for the salmon. It's coming, honey. You have an affection with pork. It's kind of weird, but I like it. Okay. Now, cilantro. We're going to garnish with a little basil, too. All right. Now the pork comes out for all the people in North Dakota here, which I know is a tremendous amount. This one we're going to do a little bit different. Who made this mess up here? It's ridiculous. Oh, see? After all that, I still cook a perfectly medium rare to medium pork. Now, as you see, as we move towards the bone, this is important. It's a little less cooked, right? Which is the way I, this is the way I like my pork right here. This is the way my kids like the pork. So this is another reason why it's great to have chops. It already rested, remember? <laughs> Who asked that question? Are you paying attention to the freaking class? Remember it sat right here in front of everybody? What's your name, sir? Peter. Peter. Do you drink either? That's what I'm talking about. Get your ass up here. <laughs> Come on, Peter. Now, I'm going to plate this up. This is unbelievable. One second, Peter. Don't make fun of me. You already drinking it? Now, I want you to... Hey. He's like, you've been fucking my life the whole time. Screw you. I'm going to take a shot. <laughs> Peter, you want to pour the sauce on top of this for me, please? All right, come on over here. Chimichurri right here. Just give me a little something right down the center. And don't screw around, man. People are watching. Yep. All right, good. I like how he can swirl the wine for sure. Oh, shit. There we go, Peter! <laughs> Thank you. Nice. All right. Lamb chops, pork chops, salmon chops, and I'm out of time chops. But next time, I promise you, we're going to grill the shit out of this. Hey.
We're not finished. We're not finished because, as you know, if you've been to one of my demos before, I, I do two things in life. Have fun and make fun of others. <laughs> so this is my opportunity. First of all, I want to thank you all for being at my class. I hope you had some fun. <laughs> Secondly, we're going to do a little something called shot roulette. And I'm going to tell you a little story about this as the tunes come on. So my very first Aspen ever, I cooked a dinner for uh, the food and wine people at Food and Wine Magazine at the Jerome Hotel in their courtyard. This is 10 years ago. 10 year anniversary. It's 10 years ago. They wouldn't let me do a demo because I was a nobody, which is perfect. But I did do one thing that nobody's ever done here before ever. I cooked four different animals on four different apparatuses overnight to serve a lunch at 11 o'clock for the food and wine people. So, in the middle of the night, I wanted a shot. I know that seems shocking to y'all. So the producer of another show I was shooting during this says, I think we should do a shot. We need more energy, blah, blah. Okay, great. So I yell at my server. I'm like, hey, I need, I need two shots of chilled Crown Royal. And he runs back to the kitchen, goes and finds my chef back there. The chef's freaking out. He needs two shots of Crown Royal. Two shots of canola oil is what he says. And my chef goes, canola oil? I don't understand. He goes, I don't know, man. He's fucking really pissed off, and he just wants chilled and everything. So here they come, two shots of chilled canola oil. It's dark out. So he brings them out. And I'm like, hey, man, cheers. Bing. And I'm right, and right when I'm here, I smell it. And I get about half the shot. Of my, my producer drinks the whole thing. I'm like, son of a. Needless to say, he's not a Jerome anymore. No, I'm just kidding. And so now I've created something. It's probably one of the greatest things I do at all my demos. But this one, particularly today, I'm going to dedicate to one of my really good friends who's not here, who's the person that's run this classic for fucking 30 years. Her name's Chris Gerdovich. She was the publisher. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I promise you, she'll feel it when we do these shots. So we need 10 volunteers. Like I said, 12 volunteers. And here's what's going to happen now. I want you to understand what you're getting into. Okay? 11 of you are going to do shots of tequila. One of you is going to do a shot of canola oil. And when you do it, you got to drink it. All right? If you don't, this whole crowd's going to shame you. But you do get a big bag of Tim Love swag. How about that? Are we going to have some fun, y'all? Is the afternoon class going to show up every other class at Aspen? I still can't hear you. I can't hear you. All right. Now, if you look or peek or try to even disguise yourself of looking and peeking, not only will you be shamed, you'll be exited out of every class I ever do the rest of my life ever and your friends will stand outside and throw rocks at you the shots will come around I need every contestant to hold out their right hand right hand they're gonna put a shot in front of you and with the crowd I'm gonna tell you when to drink all right everybody understand the rules are we clear on the rules there's a big jail in Aspen, I'm just saying. All right, here we go. Hand them out. Hand them out. Hand them out. How's everybody feeling today? Nervous. Nervous is a good idea. Hand them out, hand them out, hand them out, hand them out. Excuse me one second. All right, folks. In case you hadn't figured it out yet, my name's Tim Love. You 
were at an event called the Aspen Food and Wine Classic. You're just getting started at one of the greatest weekends you're ever going to have. And I'm nothing and nothing but proud to say that I'm helping kick that off. So in the words of Chris Gurdovich, ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy your food and wine. Let's go. Drink them up. Drink them up. Drink them up. Thank y'all very much. Don't ever miss me. I love you guys.